Hello, and thank you for joining us for this lecture on something that is rather unique, and that is sex selection of human embryos. Before I start, a small intro about myself. I'm a health law professor. I have a, my education is both in medicine and in law. And here at the Honor College, I direct the Center for Health Law and Bioethics. From this standpoint, I would like to walk you through a unique situation that deals with the ability of parents to choose the sex of their future to be child. Now, we know that choosing for something really asks, begs the question of how is my choices affecting others? Are my choices legitimate? Now, with sex selection, that is a really sexy topic because the minute we engaged on the track of assisted reproduction, that is that I am in the venue of helping you achieve your reproductive desires, suddenly not just having a child is the only ultimate answer. What kind of a child am I to have? And the first thing that parents are interested or could be interested is choosing the sex or the gender of their children. Now, May, please note, I'm talking about biology, not the social construction of what is a boy and a girl. That's something else. Specifically, straightforward boy or a girl situation. Can parents choose for that? So in the old times, well, even in Egypt, the Egyptians killed only the boys, so they left the girls. That was a brutal form of sex selection. Later on, we can have various stages in the reproduction process where parents, parents can actually choose the sex of their children. So, for example, if a woman is pregnant and she gets the ultrasound, and in the ultrasound, well, lady, mazel tov, congratulations, you have a boy or a girl, and that doesn't fit her desires or her husband's, then she might elect for an abortion. So the only reason for aborting that fetus was because he was from the undesired sex. Now, most of us will feel repelled about the very notion of that, but if you think about it thoroughly, in all jurisdictions that allow abortions per se, we don't ask the, the reason for having the abortion. So in that point, you can have sex selection in an abortion fashion. But you can make it earlier. So think of a parent going through the IVF process. That means you take the uh, uh, sperm from the male, you take the egg from the female, and then you have the fertilization in the lab. Now you can take one cell from the developing embryo, check it, and see, ah, it's XX, i.e. it's a girl, or it's an XY, i.e. it's a boy. And then you will ask the doctor, well, please put back only the embryos with the XX, or XY chromosome, and that is basically, scientifically, using technology to create a selection of the gender, of the sex, of the embryos. Well, you have the technology, so that's the medical part. And then when I step in as a health law scholar, saying, okay, should that be allowed? Should we allow parents to cross that line? You know, Gandalf from The Lord of the Rings said, you shall not pass. Well, should we pass that line saying, I will control the sex of my child? So are we moving from chance, the flip of a, of a coin, head or tail, or to I will make my choices, from chance to choice? Now, if you think about it, if it's individually done, but if it becomes a social phenomenon, then the, these could have repercussions. There will be ramifications if a society is prone to one sex over the other, or if it's so expensive that only those who can afford it will actually go through it. So we have this amalgam, beautiful psifas, mosaic of ideas, interests, ethical principles that boil in the melting pot of should we or shouldn't we allow the selection of the sex of our children. I will take you, walk you through now a global survey. So if you look into the UK, very liberal country, the answer is you can't do that. 
you jump into the continent, France, Italy, Germany, the entire European Union has a complete ban on sex selection. You can't do that. But then both those jurisdictions will have an exemption. And we will separate between medically needed sex selection and non-medically sex, or what we call social sex selection. Because you see, you can vindicate choosing the sex of your child if, for example, a disease is more prone in one sex over the other. So in that way, you warrant the sex selection on medical terms. That is supposedly less objectionable. But this is not what we're concerned with. We're now concerned with the non-medical, the socially sex selection process. Should that be allowed? And again, even though you have those exemptions, the EU and the UK, for the social, complete ban. Let's move on. Australia, Canada, complete ban on sex selection. Now you move to the land, to the country of the brave, the country of the free, the United States of America. And in there, hands-off regulation. There is actually no rule, no regulation on the question of should it be allowed to, sex, to select sorry, the sex of your children. At that moment, it's a hands-off free market attitude. So basically, there's no limits on parents' right or ability to choose the sex of their children with the only uh, note that you have to go through the IVF process unless, again, you want to resort to having an abortion just because you don't like the sex of your children. So we have, it's a spectrum. On the one side, complete ban. On the other side, do whatever you want, the U.S. case. And now Israel. Where does Israel stand between those two forces? So the Israeli, like we said, is a startup nation. We do things our own way. Israel has a very peculiar, very unique stance on medical ethics. And by the way, put attention to that. Whenever you see a question about medical ethics, go to see what happens in Israel. Because that's a really a wonderful laboratory where we have our own solutions because it's a very unique place. We have a lot of religions going on and we have a lot of history and culture and politics. Whoa! That's why it's so interesting. So, going back to the sex selection issue, in Israel, saying no, like everybody else, seems to be an ethical paradigm that fits the basic idea that people should not be commodified. Choosing a child is like choosing my Nike or choosing my soda club, or is it something different? On the other hand, doing whatever you want seems to be too strong, but there are reasons we can foresee. So, for example, if someone has seven girls and she wants to have a boy, is that really so objectionable? Hasn't she paid her due to the demography balance? Of course she did. We had a very, very famous case in Israel when the Kohen family, and as you know, priests, the Kohen uh, has their ritual uh, 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 purposes that they have to fill in all kinds of ceremonies, but he was infertile. So he had to have a sperm donation. But if he would have a boy and there would be a sperm donation, everybody would know it's not his child because he's not a Kohen. So he said, I have to have a girl. Okay, that seemed to be a reasonable excuse. And guess what? He, he received the permission. So the Israeli solution was the following. We joined the, U United, the EU camp saying, you cannot sex for medical or social purposes. However, you have a special process where you can apply for a special permit. And actually in Israel we have um, that's the committee and it's been going on for 12 years and roughly 30% of application, around 50 cases from, uh, uh, for every year, are granted this permission to do sex selection. So in other words, the feminist dilemma, should I control my body, I can do my own choices, on the one hand, versus the social understanding that human life is sacred creates a wonderful balance with sex selection. So, like I said, Israel is a wonderful place to look on these issues and others. Ono College is a center for health law and ethics research and uh, uh, public advocate. So please stay tuned for further issues and I hope you can join us in future broadcasting. Thank you very much.